Hi everyone, it's me, KP, and I'm here at my studio, The Moon and the Maker, home of Rubber Moon Art Stamps, and guess what we're here for? Yes, it's day 27. I can't believe it. It always feels so good to, I don't know, like set your mind to something and really, you know, make it happen. And I know I'm not all the way done, but I feel like day 27 is getting so close. I know I'm going to be super sad um, on the 31st because I'm going to miss this like crazy. So my brain is already trying to think of other stuff we can do. For those of you who are in Let's Get Makey Premium, be ready because I am not going to be able to stand uh, being, you know, like only coming live once every uh, four week or, you know, four times a month. <clears throat> so I'm going to plan some other exciting stuff there. And of course we will, uh, look forward again to face a day, February, hopefully, unless I don't know, maybe we'll change it to floral a day, February. I don't know. But anyway, um, definitely I will be cooking up some new stuff here. Um, because you know, that's, that's how I roll. <laughs> anyway, um, let, I have to stop for a second and go turn on a light that I forgot to turn on. And then I'll come back and we'll talk about what we're going to do today, okay? <coughs> I'm not sure if you feel like that made it a little bit better or not, but... Um, I think it makes it a little bit better for me, so hopefully it's better for you too. Um, so today, um, of course, we are going to be still working on our 3 by 4 uh, cold press watercolor paper, 300 pound, and um, the sample that I created is on 140 pound. A lot of times um, I have been making, if I do a sample uh, ahead of time, I have been making it on 140 pound paper. Um, just because I don't, honestly, if I make a lot of mistakes, I, 140 pound paper is less expensive generally. I mean, if, of course, if you're using the same, uh, you know, quality of paper, so I'm, I have the same brand and I will often do my sample on a lighter weight paper just because I don't want to mess up my 300 pound paper. Plus I'm running low on it right now. I bear, I have just enough, I think, to finish out our month and I'm out and I need to order some. Anyway, I'm babbling and getting sidetracked, but um, I wanted to, I did want to tell you something. Uh, let's go back to, oh gosh, what day was this? This was day, I think 26. Let's see. No, I'm sorry. Day 23 when we did the masking fluid. I've been meaning to um, sort of backtrack for a few days and talk to you about that. Um, remember this one? Um, this is so funny because this is the only one from any of the days that is done on 140 pound paper. Um, and it's the only one that is going uh, landscape this way. This is landscape. This is portrait. It's the only one that's going landscape. So I'm probably actually going to redo this one um, just to have it in my collection going portrait ways. But Anyway, I'm digressing again. Sorry about that. Um, this, <clears throat> if you recall, um, I was having a lot of trouble um, repeatedly using the masking film on this one um, on 300 pound paper. It kept pulling the paper and I know why now. Um, so I just wanted to sort of backtrack and explain to any of you who watched day 23 um, I believe the reason to be that the 300 pound paper I've been using is cotton paper. And I just don't think that, um, that it worked on the 300 pound cotton paper. The masking fluid worked on the 140 pound regular. It's not, it's not cotton. It's, um, hold on, let me pull it out and tell you, um, Actually, it doesn't just say on here, this is the one that I've been using. So it doesn't really, I mean, it's just a different kind of pulp or fiber, you know. So I, again, will just experiment on different papers and try to let you know, you know, uh, whenever I do some again. But I, I wanted to revisit that and just let you know that, you um, I think I discovered the reason why. And actually, um, Emily 
also experimented along with me. And she said it did the same thing on her heavyweight cotton paper. So anyway, and this, this one is not done. I just wanted to see if it would work. And it did. It did not pull up any. It didn't rip my paper at all. Okay. Or it didn't really even pull up my stamped image or anything. So that's something to keep in mind if you're going to try to experiment or play with the masking fluid. Okay. But we're, we're not doing that today. Today, um, I was inspired by something completely different. And I do want to show you, I actually did um, take my inspiration from somebody else's illustration <clears throat> just because I wanted to see if I could recreate something similar. Um, and actually, it has a really nice story. As many of you know, my friend Estrella is here visiting with her daughter. Um, and we went out the other day. Um, we went out the other day to coffee and it was a really cute little gift shop there. And when we came back, um, I had been looking at this book, but I didn't buy it. And Estrella bought it for me. And um, I, it's it's so special and it's so beautiful. And it's made by one of my favorite illustrator slash artists. Um, her name is Jennifer Orkin Lewis. If you don't know who she is, definitely follow her. She is a magnificent illustrator and artist. She works a lot with gouache, but she also does acrylics and watercolors. And this is the book that Estrella gave me. And I just loved, of course, her illustration. Um, she is a fantastic, again, uh, illustrator. She's been licensed on lots of things. So of course, I was very inspired by this cover. And I said, oh my gosh, I wonder if I could recreate something similar in watercolor. And so just, um, you know, and with stamps. So again, I'm not trying to like copy her. I just want to, um, you know, experiment. Many of these are purely for my, or purely for my own satisfaction and to just see how far I can push the stamps. So again, as you can see, it's not an exact replica and that is not my intention anyway, but I just, um, I thought, wow, I have a lot of stamps that are similar. And that's what's funny is they're from a variety of different artists. Okay. So in my little tray here, I do have Sandra Evertson's crown stamp and I, I'm so sorry. I don't really know all the names. I think Mr. Moon is here. Um, moderating for me so he can post some of these but this is um like star crown or something like that <clears throat> and then I have these two from my own personal Milagros collection <clears throat> oh actually three this little banner stamp is also from the Milagros collection okay um this is a little rosette and then this is like a little corner I don't remember what they're all called of course but anyway it's like a little corner flower and then, of course, you have the banner, the scroll. <clears throat> Excuse me. I think I might be getting a little bit of a cold again, so I'm so sorry. Hopefully, I won't have to talk too much. But anyway, um, <laughs> yeah, that's right. Anyway, um, this little sprig is from my Stamp Tracks 2 collection, okay? And then I, again, have the, I know you can't see this very well, but it's the Biddy, uh, Biddy Blooms. And that's one of the little new ones that I just came out with, but you can see how well loved it already is. I've been using it a lot for these uh, watercolor days. And then I have three little stamps, two sprigs, and a little leaf from Maxi Moon's uh, Garden Mix Stamp 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 Strack Collection. Okay, so <clears throat> um, and of course, if you do not have these stamps, then you know use what you have. Like I'm sure that you have some little flowers. Um, any crown will do. You could also, of course, just paint or draw in um, as you see fit, okay? So just like every other day, I'm going to um, go ahead and use my flat shader and my watercolors to ink or paint up the stamps. <clears throat> Excuse me again, I'm sorry. Uh, um, <clears throat> let me just take a breath for a minute. I feel like I'm talking really fast. <laughs> and I'm going to have a drink of water. Hold on one sec. Oh, excuse me. I'm going to backtrack just a minute because I was looking at the comments and um, Jan says it's probably a good idea to try out little bits of masking fluid on various kinds of watercolor paper and see which one works and keep a note of it. And that is a great idea. <clears throat> you could definitely um, do that if you're going to start keeping a watercolor journal or a golden journal, like we're about to get started and let's get Mankey Premium. Um, you could definitely do that. And like I said, because I have... Um, used and experimented and 
done lots of successful work using the masking fluid on 300 pound paper. So it definitely has to do with the type of paper. So anyway, um, okay. Uh, yes, this card, I'm looking at the comments again, and Linda says it looks car like a card for a royal announcement. So yes, this would be great to have some kind of saying in here. And you know, you could commemorate it with a date or something like that. Now I didn't um, write or do anything in there. I think if somebody had beautiful calligraphy, you could just write in there um, or whatever, but it, this would make a great journal page if you want to do it on a larger scale <clears throat> or definitely some kind of, you know, announcement or, or greeting card. So let's go ahead and get started. One thing I did do, I took a post-it note and of course um, here's my sticky side. Oh, thank you, Linda. It's okay. I'm not feeling really bad again. I feel fine. I think I'm just sort of getting a little bit of a cough again. So hopefully it'll pass. I've, besides the sore throat that I had last week, which is now gone, um, I've, you know, been a lot uh, better, way better than Mr. Moon. So <laughs> anyway, all right. Um, so I took a post-it note. Here's my sticky part. And I went ahead and cut myself a little mask just um, because I wanted to make sure I didn't go too far in. I wanted to keep a little bit of clear, you know, like white space. Although um, you'll see that once I pulled my mask up, I went ahead and um, and stamped over again. <clears throat> Excuse me, I just cut this a little bit shorter so I could have just a tiny bit more room. And as you can see, I sort of cut it, um, Oh, you know, just not perfectly. It's very, very asymmetrical and a little bit wonky, but I wanted, uh, well, you'll see, you'll see why. All right. So I'm going to start with my crown on top and mostly I will tell you, I'm going to again, be using my little core mini pan set. I am using this nickel yellow, this core nickel yellow, because, um, as you can see from my color chart here, this nickel yellow is pretty much um, my palest yellow and that's what I wanted. So I pulled the nickel yellow. I am going to use my gray of gray, which is again, a Holbein color. And then, um, you know, probably pulling from a little bit from this palette too, which you see me use all the time. <clears throat> <clears throat> Oops. I don't know what I'm doing. I want to dip into this yellow right here. And I'm just going to start stamping all around. For my rosettes, I'm going to use my opera pink or um, so I keep I always call it opera pink. I think some people call it opera pink and some brands call it opera rose. So um, either or I'm actually not 100 percent. I think uh, I think this is a Windsor Newton opera rose. I'm going to now dip in a little bit to my pyrrole, my transparent pyrrole orange. I'm going to go right over the top and not even clean off that opera rose. And then I'm just going to stamp a couple times again. <clears throat> and that's all you're going to really do. You're just going to take whatever little stamps that you have that you've decided to use and um, stamp it around in the colors that you choose.
I feel like I need a little more of a mask right here because I don't want to stamp on my rosette. So just a little makeshift mask real fast if you need to do that. <clears throat> and I got down a little low on this one, but that's okay. You'll forgive me, right? <laughs> And of course, there's actually a way I could address that too, which I'll, I'll show you. Um, I probably want to do it now while it's wet. Since I got it down a little bit too low, um, I can always, while, it, while it's nice and wet, I can kind of erase this bottom line just a little bit, okay? And then um, just with fresh, clean water, sort of a thirsty brush, I can pull that bottom line out and I'll go ahead and blot it. I'm gonna let it dry and then I will redraw this in and sort of, it, it'll make my banner a little bit skinnier, but it's okay. <clears throat> and now even though I went ahead and I know that looks weird because of my mask, but I, I purposely wanted that because I want to be able to go back in and over stamp, but I wanted to also sort of be able to control having that outline okay i know it doesn't seem like it makes a ton of sense but it gives me um it makes sure that i have a little bit of an opening there um you know you might be better at just eyeballing it and especially if i had all uh um, acrylic mounts and no wood mounts it might have been a little bit easier to place everything but but i didn't so the masking did help me and now I'm going to go back in and I'm going to over stamp some. And I don't care if it's um, kind of messy or even if it doesn't stamp perfectly because I'm going to go in and, you know, be painting up all this stuff and working pretty opaquely as it is. So. And then of course, any other little extra touches that you wanna give, you can sort of just paint in yourself. <clears throat> and that's what I'm gonna do is just go in and start painting in. I, I think this still might need to dry a little bit more, um, so I'll still avoid that. Again, just as always, using my stamps as a base, as a guideline, not as a literal image.
<clears throat> I am switching it up a, just a little bit because on this one, I did not like my teal dots on the top at all. So I'm just going to keep those yellow. So it's always fun to do sort of a preliminary one just to see if there are any changes that you want to make. Although I do find a lot of times that my first one uh, many times will be my favorite just because of the spontaneity of it. But, um, you know, you never know. Sometimes my second one comes out better. I guess it just depends. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and try to fill this in just a little bit. And I was using this nickel yellow again, but I think um, I might just end up using the gray this time just so I can fill that line in a little bit better. So now instead of having sort of that pale nickel yellow all the way around, I'm going to go ahead and use my gray, but I will finish filling that in after I get all this done up here. <clears throat> all right, I'm going to mix up just a little bit of lavender. And to do that, I'm using my pyrrole, or I'm sorry, my um, Daxazine purple, which is a very deep, dark violet, and I'm going to go ahead and mix up a little bit of titanium white with it. Make myself a really, I don't know if you can see that, a really light lavender. And I'm just going to put some little dots in there. All right, going back to my gray again, my gray of gray. I'm going to give a nice little wash all around again, sort of leaving my saved whites and not getting too, too detail-y, just letting it sort of flow around the border a little bit. And as you can see, it blossomed a little bit there, had a little bit of wetness. Of course, I could blot that if I want to. Um, it, I like it, though. Um, almost let it happen somewhere else over here. Just a little, if I can, to sort of balance it out. Not that it has to be super symmetrical, but... Um, I think I'd almost rather have 
that go on a little bit on this side rather than try to blot that away. <clears throat> and now we'll go in and just give little bits of detail here and there. I think I still will use my little nickel yellow that I was telling you about, which I have some squeezed out over here on the side. And I'll use a little bit of that maybe in this little banner here. Mixing up another little shade of purple. I'm going to put a little bit of dark, and I don't know if it's quite all the way ready because some of this is still pretty wet. I could blow dry it just a little bit, but I do want to add a little bit of darkness to the centers of some of my flowers. And um, of course, sometimes it looks nice when it spreads, but for this, I'd rather probably have it not bleed out too much. So I'm going to hit it with blow dryer just for a quick, quick second. Sorry about that. <clears throat> And then, of course, you could give a nice little wash and to the inside. Um, again, maybe using your gray or a little bit of that nickel yellow again. Oops, my brush was a little dirty, so you don't want that. And then, of course, as you're kind of, you know, looking around, you can see if it needs any other little touches anywhere. All right, so... Voila, I love it. I think it would be great with some kind of saying. And I will tell you, I have this saying, um, sparkle, glow, shine, radiate your lovely, brilliant light. Um, and so I'm, but I'm afraid like it might not fit. So what I would do is I would stamp this on vellum or like on tracing paper and then hold it up to make sure. And then of course I would probably want to use um, one of my cling mounted stamps um, in order to line it up just because I'm chicken. And I also don't use a stamp liner. So if you use a stamp liner, you're great. I mean, I guess I could always try to stamp this inside of here and see if it works. But of course, any great saying that you have that you might want to try, or um, if you have beautiful handwriting, or even if you don't have beautiful handwriting, your own handwriting, um, you know, can no matter what you think it looks like um, because it's your own individual style. So you can always definitely put that in here. I'm going to go ahead and since this is one of my testers or, you know, this was just my, my first one, I can see if it'll work on here. Ah, got it a little low, but it does fit. So 
There you have it, my friends. Day number 27. Woohoo! We made it. <laughs> so I might um, try to stamp that in. I don't know. <laughs> I'm not sure. Like I said, if I would have had it on a clear on a, a clear block, I could have uh, spaced it just a little bit better. Anyway, oh my goodness. Thank you all so much for joining me again for day 27. Um, if you have any questions, as always, please feel free to message me <clears throat> or ask me here or on Facebook. I hope that if you enjoyed this video or any of the videos that you will like it and subscribe to Rubber Moon TV. Um, and I will see you tomorrow morning at the same time, same place, same channel. Thank you so much again. Love you to the moon and back. Bye. Oh, nope. I'm saying bye, but I don't mean it because I have questions to answer right here. Um, the red Libby um, was or is um, Pyrrole Red Medium. And it's in this beautiful core mini set. If you um, are interested in getting a core mini set, please make sure to uh, visit my favorites page and you can order through Amazon um, and I get credit for that. So I appreciate you all so much. Um, and let me see if there's any other questions. I don't think so. Yeah. Oh, yes. Um, we are going to add the Holbein Gray of Gray to our Amazon list as Thank you all again, and mwah, this time, goodbye for real. <laughs> Have a great day. Go get Makey.